you're not, he doesn't like the actual, like, writing it out himself. No. He'd be one of those people that'd be, like, a, someone that, like, they hire to do, like, a creative, like, like I, I could I punch know, I'd, I'd, be a good, job. I'd be a good writing partner. Yeah, a punch up. Yeah, yeah, and I'm good at, like, You'd be fun to just have in a writer's Yeah, room. I'm just, I love acting, and I love that creative purpose. And I really love other people's work. Like, if someone, I love getting a really well-written script. And even though I'm good at improv and I enjoy it, there's something great about just someone writing something so good and you, in your mind, being like, I'm going to put this, the thing they had in the paper, I'm going to make it on and yeah. visually, and they're going to be like, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah. And, and be there to collaborate. Amazing at that. Your mind works well for directing. I can see that. Yeah. And your that's... respect for a crew, like, on top yeah. of that. Well, yeah, I think I'm quite good at the managerial side of directing, which I just think right. is the part that nobody seems to acknowledge when they want to be a director. They're like, I'm just going to have this vision and it's going to happen. And it's not. It's like, how do you lead a team of people and hear everybody and... Um, facilitate different ideas and take advantage of all of the different brains you have. I like that side of it a lot. Um, right. Yeah. You're, that's um, her thing. That's, that's yeah. the way she prep. was yeah. doing two I weeks of prep. And by the end, she was like, I think I'm going to really miss the prep. Like, like I you just, start tomorrow. I didn't want to start the actual directing. Yeah. And it wasn't that I was nervous. I was like, no, I just, I really like this part. Yeah. I like the prepping office nice. part of it. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's interesting, Jess. That's great. Um, it, yeah, I really want God. you to direct something that I can be in sometime. Yes. So, yeah, that's next. That's next. And speaking of what you're doing, oh, is there going to be another Christmas Prince movie? Madeline, oh, Madeline, me. We need to watch those now that we have like a bunch of time. <laughs> now that you're go trapped back. inside for months, we're gonna watch. I'm all interested all in these. Them. I've always yeah. wanted to see them. Let me tell so you, you, Christmas Prince. Time Christmas, Pr Hilarious. Christmas Prince on Netflix. Who knew? You did the first one. It blew up. It explodes, and now it's the it's the just. How is the that trilogy, experience? the Holy Trinity? Um, yeah. It is. It it was hilarious. Like they're so funny. I, I, they we all just find it surreal that they have blown up the way they have. It's crazy. It's so cool. It's so like fun that people all enjoy them. And... I like movies like that though. When you know you're yeah. gonna go in, like I haven't seen it, but I assume no one dies. Like it's yeah. like yeah. you know, I assume yeah. that it's yeah. nice. that's the one that's coming though. There's the Christmas Prince well, baby. There's a Christmas Prince divorce. There's a Christmas well, Prince the, nursing home. The fair movie in there, I think. That would be oh, nice. the Christmas and Prince affair. Yeah, yeah, the Christmas yeah. Prince marriage counseling. The Christmas Prince divorce. Christmas Prince. There's, Prince. And then death. Really, so many. There's so many you can do. It's, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my God! Imagine the Christmas Prince, the palace during coronavirus. <gasps> So, oh God, see? It's writing itself. It's writing a pandemic. Itself. Christmas Prince you, pandemic. <laughs> just film yourself. You just write it, direct yourself for like an hour yeah. a day, send it to Netflix. Yeah. I'm sure they'll just send get it for the you a back. back. It's going to be great. Um, we need to, um, we need to they see will not be You enjoyed that, that, right? I would love, I love you. Yeah. I just am always like, I've got another job. This is amazing. Somebody wants me to do it. That's awesome. I get to go to Romania. I really love Romania. Um, yeah. I mean, it's the kind of show, it's, it's it's funny because, as people know, like, there's half the audience and really earnestly enjoy it, and then half the audience enjoy tearing it to shreds and laughing at it. And I'm like, great. That, you enjoy it. Yeah, I saw whatever. you post. You yeah, also you take embrace, the reviews. And, that. <laughs> that's the thing, though. It's like, it's like Hallmark or Lifetime. People look at it and they go, ah, this is cheesy or whatever it is. But those things, people watch those like crazy. They're comfortable. Oh, yeah. There yeah. are things that you watch when you're like, I don't want, I love dark dra dramedy. I love all the new stuff you can watch on television. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes you don't want yeah. that. You just want something that's nice and you familiar. Know it's nice. Yeah. Exactly. I'll mix up my Mike Lee gritty kitchen sink drama with a little bit of cheer, you know? You just yeah. um, the combo. Yeah. I was going to say, though, um, I heard a really good phrase at some point, which is an insult only has meaning if you believe it to be true. And I feel like that was a little bit of a, Thing that carried me through um where a lot of people get so upset by bad reviews and it's like well, i know that i can be shit and i know that i can be okay and um like i, I just think however much meaning you imbue um that's what you take away from it it's like right i feel like the, i knew what that genre was i had i think we made a really fun funny entertaining movie series of movies yeah. that people love so like well for whatever reasons they're liking it you know 
I think I'm also, loving it. It's I'm like, loving it. Also, you're we're in a business where there's so much. It's certainly all subjective. Mm -hmm. And if you're enjoying what you're doing, yeah. and there's an audience for it, and you are a like, you seem like you take a job and you're like, I'm gonna make whatever this job is, I'm gonna make the best of oh, it. Oh yeah, you're serious. That about is from my show. acting coach, Miranda Harcourt, who is the greatest woman alive, who I love. What's her so name? Much. Miranda Harcourt. Okay. You can watch, actually, follow her. Everybody should follow her on Instagram if you're an aspiring actor. She has just started during this um, isolated period putting out these tips that she has. Like, um, oh, nice. Yeah, and they're really brilliant. She's just a genius, this woman. But one of her big things is, like, whatever job you take, you've taken it, and you have a responsibility to give that audience the best experience they're going to have. So people who get on their high horse about, um, I don't know, like, there's just a lot of like pretentious kind of stuff that happens where um, people take jobs and then roll their eyes about them. And for me, yes. I'm like, I don't understand that at all. It's like, you've taken it. And it, a lot of this is courtesy of Miranda is like, whoever watches that deserves to either laugh the most or learn something or feel as comforted as they can possibly feel. Or, you know, they're the people yeah. paying you and putting a roof over your head. So just like do the job and make it as yeah. good as you can. <laughs> and I think yeah. it's it's also part of your journey. And I, I've noticed there's actors like when they're younger, you'll end up doing stuff where maybe when you, you know, you win an Oscar someday and you look back and you go, oh, that, that episode of Boy Meets World. Ugh. But yeah. the actors that seem oh, to embrace their so past. Well, I use, well. but the actors that embrace what the work they've done, they learn from it. Also, you never, the people you get to work with you may work on a show or a movie or something that maybe isn't considered to be critically amazing, but then that person makes something 10 years later and then you work. Like, it's just, One of my favorite we're so grateful and blessed to be able to do what we do. Yeah. You can have but, so much fun doing almost way, anything. That makes me think of the, um, you know, Petals on the Wind, which I did, which is like um, a lifetime melodrama. Um, yeah, I posted that, that on my Instagram. In I saw, I was like, to just you were put my exact target audience, Lenny. Um, but it twisted is sister. kind of like twisted sister. It's like a you know the lifetime through these very melodramatic movies, and they're very popular, and people love them. And again, it's a kind of genre that I know actors who sort of turn their nose up at that sort of work. Yeah. But I got to work with Alan Burstyn, who at eighty three was like, you know it's what? Amazing. I'm kind of curious. This is a good challenge. I want to make this dialogue work. I'm going to do you know she like just thought it was interesting and it filmed locally. She likes to work. She made, I was just like, if you can do it, anybody can like get over yourselves, everyone. Yeah. Just right. what a privilege to be able to, and you can make your mind up. Of course, you not everybody has to choose everything all the time, but like, um, it should be, yeah, your decision. And if you do choose to do it, then do it with like wholeheartedness like she did. Right. And she made, yeah. she could make any single line work. And it just made me think that's half the joy as an actor you take you could take material that you read on the page and you don't know how it's going to work. And Lenny, as you say, it's like that's where the writer and the actor kind of fuse. Is like you you it's your job to make it you know um, feasible somehow. And yeah. that's the skill set. And it's almost uh, much more interesting sometimes than than working with if, you, if the words are all given to you absolutely perfectly. You're just a vehicle. You're just a vessel for things. Right. If it's not, and you're having to be creative and having to like molded into something that is interesting. I think there's like, that's kind of a big part of the art form. It's such a, yeah, your perspective on that is exactly how everyone's perspective should be. But I think What's it's your perspective on Hercules? Hercules. Hercules. Kevin Sorbo, the heartthrob. Um, the the heartthrob. He was my dad. He was my dad. <laughs> Okay, so uh, he was your dad on that. Yes. Because you did like Xena crossover. Xena was different. Uh, Zena, you were a different I, person on Xena. Xena, I played Xena's soul gets put into my body. So I was like little Xena. But that was unrelated to Hercules, which was... Um, Xena was when Lucy was pregnant, by the way. It was when she was like nine months pregnant. I look at all my friends now who are doing that, like trying to juggle TV shows and stuff. Oh, like that's oh, I was that kid who got like rung in for the episode where she wasn't able to come to work, so they put his soul in someone else's body, you know. Um, Hercules, Hercules is really fun. I How old were you? Uh, four, I think. Oh, four so this five. is your first job? 
No, <laughs> no. I, so you're a kid. Oh, I said. You were like young, young, young. Okay, so I was kid actor. Into acting. Like why? And Let's how go back that. to the beginning. I need one to try to explain. I was. I was a kid actor, but there's so many kind of disclaimers you want to put with that. Like one is my parents never let me take much time off school. They were always very much about keep your options open, which I really appreciate now. Um, yeah. Just thinking, I don't know. I still don't know it's what I want to do forever. I love it. And I get great joy, but I want to do lots of things in life. Like, like, you know, there's, I like to think of if I retire, being able to use some other skills that I have learned. Um, so I was really that's, grateful. That's that. one of our questions is what you would you do, which you can come back to when you're done with oh, this. Yeah. What would you do if you weren't an actor or in film? Awesome. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's, I'll keep that tab open on the browser. Keep it tab. Keep it tab. But I was thinking, what? What, what was the end of the question? Sorry, my brain. Oh, how did you get into acting? When, when you parents... first started, your parents. Oh yeah, the parents. Parents were to, Yeah. They're also just not stage parents at all. They were like really um, just cautious about it, which I, I think is healthy because it's a pretty strange environment and pretty Fair. vulnerable. And um, I was lucky. I got. I kind of got to do it the way other kids play tennis or learn piano or do whatever. It was like I could do a little bit on the weekends and. Um, and also in New Zealand, it was like so small that you just knew everyone. So the people I know now who are sound designers, I remember them as boom ops when I was like two and it's, it's small, yeah, like very familial kind of feeling. So, um, I was, yeah, I did like little bits and pieces as a kid, like in a short film when I was two and in the piano when I was three, but I was like this, it was really glorified extra. It was like, um, I just, I was in a school production and they had these angels, but like, yeah, I was kind of always around it. And that is one part that I think maybe is really useful now is having a certain amount of comfort on a set. That that part, I don't know that it's like what I've learned or the particularly developed skill sets. It's just a comfort thing that I have where it's not having a camera this close to my face doesn't throw me. That seems nice because that must be quite sort of st stressful to step into if you haven't done that as an adult oh. and suddenly get used yeah. to it. It Here, takes a little while, yeah. When did you start acting? Can you just tell me your story? I, don't know I, did I was 10. You, you were, were young. Yeah, so I, I, knew you I were had kids. the same yeah. parent situation where they were like, no, you have to go to school. It can only yeah. be in like summers, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't smart. study acting. I, I grew up on the East Coast. I, I played sports and like... What sports? Basketball, soccer. Um, who, do you, who do you support, by the way? I forgot. I like the Celtics. Oh, you, yeah, you're a basketball fan. She's a right? Cleveland LeBron James, but now are you a Lakers fan? I'm a LeBron fan, so I'm a Lakers fan. We LeBron. talked about this yeah. a and, few and years I, ago when he was still in Cleveland. Yeah. And then he was going to leave, and I remember saying, yeah, I think he's going to leave. But you, so you, you must love that he's in that. L.A. now. And he's playing better, he's playing better now well. than he ever has. He's I ridiculous. know. That, that is probably my... my oh. <laughs> My indulgent like thing I'm disappointed about with this quarantine is the basketball. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. That's when people started taking it seriously. When the NBA yeah. went down, people were like, "What?" Like that was oh, yeah. the end do you of think, all. End. Do you think that um, at some point, when everybody's been quarantined long enough, they will play the games again um, in front of no audience? What's your take, Lenny? Um, I think the NBA season's over. I don't think that's going to come back. I think we're going to get football, maybe maybe some baseball. I think NBA is probably wow. going to start pushing. I hope it doesn't because I love the NBA. Because um, George's suggestion was that they play in front of empty auditoriums and then see right. five people in later. <laughs> that, that actually isn't bad to me. It's just they had, they, they had restart. such a hit. Where yeah. so many different players had gotten it from, you know, Utah player playing. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so yeah. So they're really oh. going to have to clean that up before I think they want to risk the the idea that they go because if they go back too yeah. soon and yeah. all of a sudden it happens again, oh disaster! I think sports right now is really in kind of like a, let's wait and see, but also what about the Olympics? The fact that they've just pushed them to twenty twenty one, but they're still yeah, they calling them twenty twenty. Real quick, Rosie. I called you Rosie. I love Rosie. Rosie. Um, we're going to hit it at an hour. It's going to shut off. So oh. we'll, we'll stop and start over. You, will you, do you want to keep going? Do you have more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. All right. We're going to stop real quick. Are you really busy right now? If you want to get yourself. out by 530 to get a couple more. Oh, no. Yeah. We're, we'll right only go another like 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. So do we right, get we'll out right now? We'll close it and we'll bring you back. So go, but right. We'll go out and click back on. <laughs>
I put the questions on. Come on, people!